Välkomna ska ni vara till finalkvällen på Europa. Welcome to the final evening at the Europe Conference 2022. This is an it's, what an amazing week we've had. It's been an amazing conference. We are so happy to have finally been able to gather after two pandemic years and we have been able to gather for service. It's been so encouraging to be here at the Europe conference again. So warm a warm welcome to you tonight. Yes, you are super welcome. The sp speaker for this evening is Joachim Lundqvist, and he is really excited. I've just met him, and I really think that God has put a word on his heart. heart. I think that he wants to speak about something that will touch you and touch me tonight. So sit with an open heart. God wants to speak. The Holy Spirit is here. So wherever you are tonight, you should feel very welcome. and. Open your heart and just let God speak tonight. And whether you've been here the whole week or if this is the first service you're watching, so I want you to expect something from heaven tonight. We think that God is going to speak through Joachim. We would love to know where you're watching from and the chat is open. So be sure to write if you are in northern Sweden, southern Sweden or even in another country. Write where you're watching from and interact with us in the chat. And of course you can also uh, write your prayer requests there. You can also email us at boon at livesord.se. We would love to pray for you. So send your prayer requests and feel that you're really with us tonight. Let us just reconnect that there have been, has been a conference with a couple of meetings and God has really spoken in different ways through these meetings. So go back to Leave It's Old Play and listen to the different messages, listen to the different speakers, because all of them had specific puzzle pieces that is a word from God. So if you have missed meetings, it's super easy to just go back and watch them. We can also say that even if this is the final evening, there is something that happened after this night. There is a meeting at 10 p.m. tonight for young, young people and young adults. So if you can't come to 7, but if you can come here later tonight, please do at 10 p.m. because Tim Ross will speak. Uh, once more and he is going to share his testimony so come here if you feel like you are one of in those categories youth or young adult so come and f celebrate with us tonight I think it's it will be really powerful in every way so please come should we pray for this service and just put it in God's hands and believe that the Holy Spirit will work Father, we pray, we thank you for this evening. We j just put this night in your hands, Lord. We are ready to meet you, Father. We are ready to receive you tonight. We just open up for you to do what you want to do, Lord. We pray that you will throne on our worship tonight, Lord. We just thank you, Lord, for what you're going to do in people's hearts tonight, Lord. We just thank you that your word will be rooted in our hearts, Lord. We thank you that we will be filled after this evening, and we long to meet you, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. We just thank you for Joachim, who is preaching tonight. We thank you that you put your words on his tongue, Lord. We thank you that for what he has received in his heart. We just bless him tonight, Jesus. We bless the worshippers who is going to lead us in praising you, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We welcome you. Come, Holy Spirit, tonight. Come, Holy Spirit. I pray that you will reach every p man, every person who is here or is watching us online. I pray that you will just come, Holy Spirit. I pray for your, your presence in every hem home, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. We really want to encourage you, no matter where you are or how you're watching, and be with us now and dance and be with us in the spirit, in the worship. So welcome to come to this worship, to this meeting. Då, kära vänner, säger vi välkommen till lördagkvällen på Europa.
Dear friends, let's say, I'm say welcome to the final evening at the Europe Conference 2022. How many of you are happy that you came to this conference? How many people are even more happy? Are you happy? Are you over there happy? And can I hear the middle section here? And can I hear this section? And what do you say on this side? And what do you at home say who watches online? Let us stand up together. Welcome to this evening. Such a wonderful conference we've had. It's not over yet. Pastor Joachim Lundqvist will preach for us tonight. And we are looking forward to that so much. Words that the Lord wants to speak tonight. So we open our hearts. We say, come Holy Spirit. So just let us pray and stretch our hearts up to the Lord right now. Father, we praise you and we thank you. We thank you for what you've done during these days, Lord. And we want to hide these hearts in our hearts, Lord. We want to take them and live with them and pray through them, Lord. And we want to act on them. We want to step out in faith, Lord. And we praise you and we thank you. We pray, come Holy Spirit to th over this evening. Do exactly what you want tonight. Touch us, shake us, lift us, transform us, change us. And we praise you. We thank you. Amen. Let us step out in worship now. Praise the Lord from all our heart. Let's give the worshipers a, a round of applause. Let's praise the Lord. There is freedom. There is freedom. Let us sing out the kväll. Where the spirit of the Lord is. There is freedom. There is freedom. Yes, where the spirit of the Lord is. There is freedom.
tonight Shake sweet foe, priests and shake at the sound of Jesus' name Lives made whole, hearts awake at the sound of Jesus' name Shake sweet foe, priests and shake at the sound of Jesus' name If you need freedom tonight, there is freedom for you. If you need healing tonight, Jesus has that for you. If you've struggled with anxiety, with depression, then you should sing this song once more and proclaim with your mouth that Jesus is Lord. He can set you free tonight.
Thank you, Jesus, that you want to send your rain tonight, and that you have spoken that we will that we will have your rain. Thank you that you melt our hearts tonight. We pray to you, God.
Father, we praise you. We praise you, Lord. We praise you, Lord. We stand in awe before your face, Lord. We praise you. We thank you, Lord. We thank you. We praise you for your heart, Lord. We thank you for your heart, Lord, and we praise you that we can be together with you, God. We can come to you. We can meet you in this way, Lord. 
It's nothing we take for granted, Lord. You're so holy, you're so pure, Lord. And that we can step into your presence, Lord. All these people who are gathered here, everyone who sits at home and watches, we thank you for your presence. We praise you that you touch our hearts and that our worship can touch your heart, Lord. We praise you, Father. We praise you, Jesus. We praise you, Holy Spirit. And we praise you that we can belong to you and that we can honor you and worship you in all of eternity. We thank you for that in Jesus' name. And everyone said, shall we give the Lord a round of applause? Thank you, Jesus. Turn around to your neighbor and say, thank you, Jesus. And then you can sit down. How many want more? More of Jesus, more of the Spirit, more faith, more mission, and more of all the wonderful things that the Lord has for us. How many are grateful for these days? We're so grateful. We're so happy for all of this. We are going to take up tonight's offering. And we want to do that in a very simple way. This offering is going to Word of Life and all of the Word of Life uh, movement, everything that comes from this place. And if you've been blessed by this conference, we can just take up a, an offering of gratefulness to the Lord because He has been so good to us. And if you're wondering what Word of Life is and what we want to do in the future, it's just this, more mission, more Holy Spirit, that this is a place where the Word of God is being preached. This is a place for the next generation. This is a place where missionaries, missionaries is growing, where young people will get their lives touched a place for Bible schools to equip, to train, and to send people to the end of the earth. Right, Christian? So this is what our hearts are longing for. This is what Word of Life is. That has with the Holy Spirit to do. The openness for the Holy Spirit. When the grace of the Holy Spirit with the gifts of the Holy Spirit, a place to grow in faith, a place to be filled of the Word of God, more and more Bible schools, right? Simon Alstrand. And we will just do this in a very, very simple way. I'm not going to say too mo much more about it, but I just a gratefulness for what the Lord has done during these days. Me, myself, feel a lot of gratefulness in my heart for everything that the Lord has done. All of you has come here, everyone who's watched us uh, from home, maybe from your trailers, uh, in your vacation, maybe you gathered people at home, and all of you have come and gone in the services here. Uh, such a deep presence of Jesus a flow from the Holy Spirit. So many words 
And what we would like to do is to continue building. To continue building. Continue building. Continue building. Continue building on everything that the Lord has called us to do. And we do this in the greatest humility. We don't say that we have, we don't say that we are big, best, and most beautiful. But what the Lord has called us to do, and what the Lord has given to us in this place, in the whole of the Word of Life movement, we are so bold in that, but also so grateful over it, for it. So if you've been touched by the Lord these days, let's just thank the Lord by giving an offering so that we can continue, so that we can keep reaching out to people in mission, so that we can keep calling Bible school students here, so that we can keep building Christian schools, that we can keep doing everything that the Lord has called us to do. So we take up this offering now and you can give in so many different ways. If you lift your hand, you can give a, um, a gift in the future and you can fill in a, a sum that you will pay later. You can also give from your card in that way. And you can also give through Swish if you have a Swedish mobile mobile number. If you have a Norwegian mobile number, you can give through VIPs. And if you're with us online, you can also give by following the instructions on the screen. Let's just thank the Lord for this gift. Lord, we thank you. We bow our hearts before you, Lord. We praise you for what you've done these days, and we feel such a deep gratitude. We praise you that there are so much more there's so much more of you, Lord, and we never want to stop you in this place. We want that this should be a house of bread where people can come and eat of the word and drink of the spirit. And we praise you. We thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Tonight you will hear a dear, dear friend. He's not a guest speaker. He is a previous uh, senior pastor here and he is Pastor Joachim Lundqvist you don't want an introduction but I can't resist I feel such a deep gratitude to you as well Joachim and our friendship that is uh, from so many years back and for me as a host for the first time at the Europe conference and carrying that burden and having you at my back is a, such a safety for me. So we look forward to what the Lord has put on your heart tonight. Israel och det judiska folket hade under en lång tid varit en lydstat under det romerska riket och längtade därför efter att en frälsare skulle rädda landet ur sitt förtryck. När Jesus en dag undervisat folket möts vi av en man som har över hundra soldater under sitt befäl, en centurion. Denna man var en ganska unik officer. Han hade låtit bygga en synagoga till judarna och han älskade det judiska folket. Vi vet inte säkert, men antagligen har även han kommit till tro på Abrahams Gud under sin tid i landet. 
denna man förstod också att det var något speciellt med judarnas profet Jesus och hans undervisning. Dagligen hördes berättelser i området om de mirakler som Jesus utförde. Officerens tjänare, som han var mycket fäst vid, låg för döden. När han nu fick höra att Jesus var i närheten sände han bud efter honom. En inre övertygelse brann i honom. Att ett enda ord räcker. Ett ord från sonen till Abrahams Gud. Mandatet från skaparen av himmel och jord skulle ta bort all sjukdom från hans tjänare. Ett ord var nog och hans tjänare blev frisk och Jesus förundrades över hans tro. Om ett ord räckte för tjänaren Räcker också ett ord för dig. It's also enough for you. They say this mountain can't be They say these chains will never break But they don't know you like we do There is power in your name We heard that there is no way through We heard the tide will never change And seen what you can do. There is power in your name. So much power in your name. Move the air, move above. Break the See a miracle 
Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Should we stand up in the Lord's presence for a while longer? There's something important and precious that the Lord wants to do here before we go to His Word. Firstly, how many are so incredibly grateful that we can be together and have a conference again in the Lord's presence? Two years pandemic and restrictions and clo closing downs. And I prayed to God and I asked, now when we come out of the pandemic, is there something we need to be a bit careful about? Because two years is a long time and things uh, get added that doesn't should, shouldn't be there and things are, lef are leaving. But so is there something extra we need to be careful about? And I heard the Spirit say, never stop cheering. Never stop cheering. Never stop cheering. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We have done online now for two years, and it's great. It's, it's good for Bible teaching and preaching, but maybe not every Sunday when you were sitting in your chair over there, you maybe you, you didn't just stand up and cheer always. And the last thing that Sweden and Europe needs is a silent Christianity. That's the last thing that Sweden and Europe need is an introvert, depressed Christian Christianity and that's why we need to be careful and we need to have joy in God's house that's why we need to cheer for God's released children because the devil knows what happened to the walls of Jericho when the Israel's children cheered he knows what happened with the enemy when Josaphat's army were cheering before the Lord he knows what happened with the prison when Paul and Silas were cheering at midnight and he will know what will happen in Sweden with the walls of Sweden when the children of God keep cheering for a couple of years ago we had a movement in Sweden that was called Reclaim the Streets. In tonight we start the movement Reclaim the Shout. You know what we should do? We just prepare our hearts. Maybe you need to cheer a bit extra. There's different kinds of cheering. There is temple cheering and fish fish cheering. Temple cheering is second Chronicles 5 when the template is built. It is the cheering of the the answered prayer. It's the cheering that the God has been good to you and you've seen his goodness. You look back and you cheer over a temple that is finished. The answer to the prayer. But there's also the fish cheering and that's what we read in the book of Jonah when the prophet is in a fish and he has no prayer as answered prayers at all and it's dark and it's tight and do you know what he did he was cheering in the fish and when he was cheering the fish bit him up on land and he got a new chance and 
whether you have a temple cheering or a fist cheering in your heart, we should just let it out right now. I will count to three and then we will cheer to the God of heaven in this room and maybe you can reclaim the cheering over your life, reclaim the cheering over Swedish Christianity and European Christianity and let a cheer of freedom come from this place. One, two, three. Turn around to someone and give them a Holy Spirit high five and then you can sit down. So wonderful to be here this last evening at the Europe conference and just enjoy God's presence. It's such a privilege for me to share God's word with you tonight. And when I got this message that I want to share with you tonight, it's always a bit nervous uh, at the Europe conference and then you see through the whole week how God is putting the one and the other and how everything fits together so well and I pray that what we will read in God's Word tonight will be a blessing and a strength to you and I have actually picked it a bit from my meeting with the Bible school students which is something we one of the most important things we do here that we have a Bible school that we love so much and we have put so much value in it and I am privileged to be one of the teachers there and even if I live in, diff in a different place and me and Maria has been stepping into a new function in the movement of Word of Life I am very I still want to do my Bible school subjects because it's some of the most important thing and a lot of times when I meet the students, I get different questions. And one of the most common questions is what I want to speak about tonight. It's how can I hear God's voice? How can I be led by the Holy Spirit? How can I grow in hearing what God says to me? Because I think more than anything else that God needs a Christian people in this country and in Europe that hears what he says. Ben Fisier spoke about this in the beginning of the conference. Yesterday you heard Tim Ross speaking about listening, hearing, and then building. So I want to speak to you tonight about how you can hear God's voice. When we start to speak about this uh, subject, we first of all need to say that God speaks in many different ways. It's not just one way He uses to speak to you and to lead you. He does it in many different ways. And if we just listen to one way, we will be lost. Just to mention some and start with the most important way in which God speaks to you and in which God leads you, He speaks to you by His Word by the Word of God. Can we say Amen in the church? He talks to you through His Word. Let's never underestimate that. There's a wonderful Bible word in 2 Timothy, Timothy 3.16 where Paul writes that all Scripture is God-breathed. All Scripture is God-breathed. God has no problem with a bad breath. When God is breathing, the Holy Spirit comes out. We see that in the morning of creation, He forms Adam through dirt and then He, he breathes in His Spirit in Him. And that's how the man becomes alive, by God's Spirit. And then we go forward to John chapter 20 when Jesus is risen and is gathering his disciples and says as the Father sent me I send you and then says and with that he breathed on them and said receive the Holy Spirit and when it says that the scripture is God breathed it means that the Bible is not just a book that gives you knowledge about God but God's Spirit is living in every word you read 
So when you read, you don't just get information about God, but you get fellowship with God. Every word that you read leads you into fellowship with the Holy Spirit. And the more time you have in communi- communion with the Holy Spirit, you will have you will easier recognize the Holy Spirit and and then it's easier to be led by the Holy Spirit. So let's never forget that the Word of God is the most important way where the Spirit leads us. Another thing that God uses to lead you and me is what I would like to call godly traditions. Godly traditions. I know that there are always some spirit-filled Christians as myself that who don't like the word tradition. I don't know what it is, but they're also like, uh, I don't really like uh, this thing about traditions. I'm not religious. I am free in Christ. But for your uh, neighbor's sake, I hope that you are and <laughs> you like the tradition of brushing your teeth and for your other neighbor's sake I hope that you like the tradition of showering and washing your clothes traditions aren't good or bad it just means that you're doing the same thing over and over again and what God wants us to have good godly traditions in our lives and when we have that God will use them to lead us and speak to us in the right time for example the tradition to read the Bible every day the tradition to bless the food before you eat it the tradition that to have a moment with the Lord on the morning and maybe the most beautiful of all the tradition to go to church on Sundays and bring your children Because when you do that, when you install the godly traditions in your life, you place yourself consciously in a context where God speaks, where the word is preached, where you can worship God and be in an atmosphere of prayer. And do you know what's going to happen? God will use that to speak to you and to lead you. So take that from the conference. What's godly traditions? are established in my life and in my family. God will use them to speak to you and lead you. The third thing, God uses Christian common sense to speak you and lead you. And what I mean with that is the usual things that Jesus asked us to do. And maybe they're not that spectacular or sensational, but just love your neighbor, right? Bless those who and help the poor give generously to all good work. The basics of the Christian life, when we live in them and according to them, Jesus is going to use them to lead you and speak to you. Let's just jump back. I missed something about godly traditions. It's special with them. Uh, it's a thing that Jesus had. It said it was said that he went to the synagogue on the Sabbath, as was his custom. The fact is that one of the most powerful miracles in Acts three and four, the core miracle in the first church, came from a godly tradition. It was a man who were at the gate got um, healed and it's interesting that the miracle occurred by Christian uh, Peter and John having a tradition in Acts 3 and 1 we read Peter and John were going up to the temple at the time of prayer at 3 in the afternoon as they had established that if we're in Jerusalem and it's uh, three in the afternoon, we would go to the temple and pray there. And God used that godly tradition to to send them to the lame man so the miracle could happen. And so with these different ways to that God used to lead you, word of God, 
godly traditions and Christian common sense, we could actually live led by those things only all our life and still live an amazing life with the Lord. But there is also one more way that God uses to lead you. And I want to um, talk a bit more about this because this is so needed. And it's this of God speaking to you personally. When God speaks to you and he speaks to you about something that is important for you and for your time and for your situation. And I've prayed for this night that the God will uh, set something loose on the inside of you, a, a belief in that God wants and can lead you and speak to you and lead you into the future. So if God leads us by his word, by godly traditions and by Christian common sense, the basics in life, why does he also talk personally to us? And it's because of two things. One, th the first is that sometimes he needs to say specific things to you that he can't say by his word or godly traditions or something like that. You can never uh, go to his Ezekiel and <laughs> say, and it doesn't say, call Susanna now. But sometimes you have to call Susanna now. S sometimes that's what God needs to do. And that's why sometimes he needs to speak to you personally and put a new thought in you that is so specific that he can't communicate that with you in another way than by a personal uh, word to you. The other reason is that when he wants you to step out of your comfort zone, when he wants you to do something un unusual, something that you're not really used to, and I love when we see this in Jesus' life. One uh, example is John chapter 4. You can go to that in your Bible. You can open your Bible if you haven't already. Let's read uh, verse 3 and 4 from John chapter 4. So this is one of the great examples when God leads Jesus in a bit of an unusual way. You come in a uh, context where Jesus preached in Judea. This is the first part of his service. He preaches and, and people are baptized parallelly with John preaching and, and uh, baptizing people. In verse 3. Uh, Han måste då ta vägen genom Samarien. Här är en intressant vers. He has to go through Samaria. Why is this interesting? If we can get up a map. And this is Judea in the brown part in the south. And then Galilee in the north. And we see that Samaria is in the middle, the blue part. So we sit here in Sweden. So of course, if you're going from Judea in south to Galilee in the north, you can go, you have to go through the Samaria because that is the shortest route. That is how you transport yourself from Judea to Galilee. But what we may not know is that in Jesus' times, no Jew went through Samaria because when you went from Galilee to Judea or vice versa, because Jews could not be with Samaria, Samaritans. Samaritans believed in several gods. They believed in the God of Israel, but also in the God of Assyria. So this was against what God has said to the Jewish people. The Lord is your only God. You shouldn't have any other gods than me. So this meant that the Jews didn't like the Samarians and they did everything to avoid them. So when they went to, from Judea to Galilee or vice versa, they went by the Jordan rivers to not be, have to go through Samaria. So when it says in John 4 that Jesus has to go through Samaria, he doesn't really have to in the geographical sense or in the cultural sense he has to because the spirit led him to do that 
because the spirit knew that there is a woman at a well outside of the city of Samaria. There is a woman there and her life is in darkness but her heart is open. Jesus, go through Samaria. Go through Samaria, even if you don't usually do that, even if it's not culturally acceptable, even if it isn't what you would normally do. So do that, because a miracle is about to happen on the other side of your obedience. And this is what Jesus says to you too. Be prepared to go through Samaria when the Spirit of the Lord says that to you. Be prepared to go through Samaria because when Jesus does that and when he's obedient in the speech in the Lord, he meets this woman and she's the first that gets to hear that he is Messiah and a whole city comes to faith in him. And this is what we need to see in Sweden. So we need to start to obey the Lord in our hearts, whatever he says. And this is uh, through the whole of the history of Word of Life. So many times we have had words from God that seemed strange, that seemed impossible, that didn't weren't logic. But when we chose to obey God's Word, to go through Samaria, even if we don't usually do that, we've seen how God has done miracle after miracle. In our early history, there was a word that was raised four million dollars in four years four million dollars in four years and this church maybe had five six hundred people at that time and we just built this church for loads of money that we had borrowed and then we had to raise four million dollars in four years it was crazy about as crazy as to go through Samaria but thank God we had grace in this church to obey the Word of God and after four years we had collected the 40, 4 million dollars and so the, the doors of the Soviet Union were open and we were ready and in, today there are over 300 Word of Life churches as a result of that God said something and we listened and then went think what wouldn't have happened if that word hadn't come to us and for about five to six years ago the Lord said that there would be a new wave of mission and we mobilized and we thought okay which country should we go to and we couldn't know then that the wave of mission should come in the other direction that we weren't the one who were going out, but there was a wave of refugees coming here. But when we saw it happen, we were prepared and we could pray and stretch out. And as a result, hundreds of Muslims came to faith. We had to start a previously Muslim version of our Bible school. And we have exam, uh, and 450 people have gone through that Bible school. God spoke. God spoke and we walked on that word and I don't know what he will say to you tomorrow or to word of life tomorrow but it's burning in me that I want to obey I want to go through Samaria once more whatever he has in his heart for the future our collective future and your personal future when he asks you to go through Samaria so obey so how do we do this how can we grow in hearing the voice of God? How can we calibrate our hearts so that we are prepared when the word of the Lord is coming? Let me give you three points, because what would a, pr a message be without three points? The first I want to say to you that is so important about obeying the word of God is relax. I know it's not grammatically correct, but my two other points were also <laughs> beginning with an A in Swedish then. So the word in Swedish is not really grammatically correct. But relax. This is one of the biggest mistakes we do. We make it complicated. We make it really complicated. We think that God is a strange voice. We believe that it should 
be in a certain way, but you need to relax. Realize that it is the most natural thing that can happen, that he who lives in you also leads you forward. He wants to speak to you, he will speak to you, and you can hear his voice. It does, you don't have to be a full-time prophet or pastor, whoever you are. From the first day you give your heart to Jesus, you can hear the voice of God. So don't let fear come into the equation. So many Christians are stuck in fear of God's voice. What if he's already spoken and I missed him? What if I live in disobedience without knowing it? God took you here tonight. He knew what I was going to say and that you are here tonight means that he thinks you should hear this. He wants to speak to you. He will speak to you. And he took you here to the Europe conference, not at least to do you more sensitive for his spirit's lead, leading. There's uh, a part in 1 Samuel, Samuel chapter 3 that I love, and this is so relevant just about this to hear God's voice. And it is when the boy Samuel is called and gets to hear the word of the Lord, hear God speak to him. And these first verses in 1 Samuel 3 has a lot to teach us when it comes to how God speaks, how it works, and how we can be open and ready that the same thing happens to us. It says, The boy Samuel ministered before the Lord under Eli. In those days the word of the Lord was rare. There were not many visions. One night Eli, whose eyes were becoming so weak that he could barely see, was lying down in his usual place. The Lamb of God had not yet gone out, and Samuel was lying down in the house of the Lord, where the Ark of God was. Then the Lord called Samuel. Then the Lord called Samuel for the first time. Samuel gets to hear the voice of the one that he has served and heard about during his, his uh, growing up. And there are two things here from this story that we can learn and that we can apply in our lives. Samuel had two things that made him qualified to hear God's voice. Firstly, he was in the right place, in the temple, where God is. And the secondly, he wasn't just in the temple, he was serving in the temple. He was serving God in God's holy temple. And if I can give a piece of advice to you whoever you are make sure that you're in the temple in the local church and make sure that you're not just watching there but that you're serving there in God's temple in the local church if you're there in a local church and if you have rooted yourself in that so that you're serving the God's God's kingdom with whatever is needed in that church you are qualifying yourself to hear God's voice in the right time. I think it's very fascinating if you read uh, through in this story that Samuel thinks that God's voice is Eli's voice, which means that God's voice was possible to mistake for another person's voice. We're so used to these Christian movies, you know, the Prince of Egypt, where God's voice is always like, Moses! That's like what we're used to. And if we expect that kind of voice, maybe we won't ever hear it. But Samuel realized that maybe it was Eli. It is possible to mistake with a person's voice. And that's how it is today. God's voice can be mistaken for your own voice. God's thoughts can be mistaken for your own thoughts and I have good or bad news for you it will always be like that you will never ever come to a point in your life when you know a hundred percent that that is God do you know why because we're called to live in faith and not just by watching we are called to take steps in faith all our lives and we have to struggle with that little insecurity because if we didn't have any insecurity it wouldn't be faith right 
so you can learn to recognize more and more but you would never be able to mistake God's voice with a person's voice and you will never fully know what is God because you before you take the step of faith so relax and let the Lord speak in your in your inner I have to uh, get an example of this because honestly all of the times where I've been led by the Holy Spirit I have understood afterwards that I was it's always that like that we will always see God's road through the windshield but my experience is that you see them in the rear mirror and then we always uh, make our stories so we it sounds like we always knew that and we say God spoke to me but in in actuality we were really uncertain but then you had to take a step and then you realized it was God and then we want some spotlight on ourselves so it sounds like we were we knew what was going to happen all the time no problems I've told this story some sometime earlier but it's so good here I was in Mexico City a few years ago and speaking at a pastors conference about eight or nine hundred pastors a three-day event every morning a new chauffeur came to the hotel to take me from the hotel to the conference and the third and last day there was a new guy and he was driving a small car from 1967 and I tried to fit into that car, there was not much space and he drove out to the freeway in the Mexico City and the car was shaking and I thought what an amazing experience how many can, can is will experience going in a car like this in Mexico City and this chauffeur was new so I spoke a bit to him, I asked him what his name was and I said after a while um, what do you do in church? And then he was silent. And after a while he said, to be honest, my life with God is not where it should be. And I thought, oh, okay. But tell me what is what's happened. And he started to tell me, and tears started streaming down his face. He told me that when he was young, a child, and when he was a young man, he was burning for Jesus and wanted to give all of his life to him. But then, in the late teenage years, he made some wrong decisions, some bad decisions, and he lost Jesus. And now he was convinced that God was disappointed in him and didn't want anything to do with him anymore. And I started preaching the gospel for him in this car. And I said that, do you know what? Jesus loves you. He doesn't watch you with judging eyes. He's here in the car with us. Not much space, but he's here. And he's standing with open arms and he wants to welcome you back in, in a relationship with him. And he cried and cried. And the more he cried, the more the car was shaking. And I said, do you know what? Pull over. We pulled over and we stood there by the freeway outside of Mexico City and he cried like a child and I preached a new chance, new grace, new forgiveness, a new chapter and then I said can I pray for you and you will come to Jesus and he wanted to and we prayed and God's Spirit filled the whole car but God's Spirit filled the whole car and he took Jesus in his heart and he beamed and he cried and laughed and cried and laughed and I was just enjoying the moment but then I started to watch the clock and I realized that we are really really late and we have to go I am already late to my morning um, preaching so I said to him we actually have to go now even if this is a very a, mo a very great moment so you have to take me to church now and he looked at me and he said we're, but we're on our way to the airport and I said no no that's tomorrow oh dear that's tomorrow I have one day left you can't take me to the airport now tomorrow I'm going home but now I have one day left at church and he looked at me and it was, it was a strange silence and he said to me a sentence that I will never forget you are Mr. Williams right? Mm -hmm. 
And slowly I realize that this is not my chauffeur. It turned out to be a random Uber driver that had been sent to the hotel to pick up a Mr. Williams and go to the airport. And everything is so good up, t up till Mr. Williams asks him how his relationship with God is. And I'm sitting here and thought, how did this happen? How much heavenly coordination went into this project? God kept my chauffeur away and Mr. Williams. And maybe both of them were in the same car. Maybe Mr. Williams got saved. And I realized I'm sitting here in a God's event. I can't take any credit whatsoever for this. But the only thing I did that in the morning I prayed, Holy Spirit, use me, period. And that's just how God wants to use you. Simple, natural, relaxed, in the middle of your everyday life. You will discover that you are much more led by Him than you can realize. The other thing that you need to think about to grow in being led by God and being led by His Spirit is respond. When God speaks to you and when God puts things on your heart, it's not just because He wants to give you information. He wants you to do something. Something needs to be done. He doesn't give you information for you to show how spiritual you are. He gives it because something needs to happen that you should take an initiative of some sort. And again in 1 Samuel chapter 10 verse 6, Samuel talks to Saul here. And he says, the spirit of the Lord will come powerfully upon you and you will prophesy with them and you will be changed into a different person. Once these signs are fulfilled, do what, whatever, can we say, do, can we say, do whatever your hand finds to do before God is with you. When God's spirit comes upon you, do something, take an initiative, lift a staff, Ring, call someone, give that number that he spoke to you about, do something, because that's why the Spirit is talking to you. And God's Spirit won't talk to you tomorrow before you've, you've done what he asked you to do yesterday. We have a yearly youth conference here every Halloween. And I remember that I spoke to, about this uh, to the youth one night. God's presence were, God was so present there, and we spoke about how the Spirit wants to lead you in a natural way. And everyone stood up. This is, was in the end of the uh, message. And I said to everyone, in God's presence right now, take up your cell phone. Everyone took up their cell phone, and I said, scroll through your... Um, contacts and everyone did that and and just stop at a name stop at a name some person who's in your phone just stop by that person then we will believe together that it wasn't uh, random why you st stopped at this person it was God's spirit who led you and everyone stopped at a name and then I said write a text to this person what you write depends on that re on your relationship to him or her Maybe you've already talked to this person about Jesus. Write something more about Jesus. If you don't really dare to do that, or if you haven't tell, 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 told that person that you're a Christian, you can write something else. Everybody wrote a text to this person. And I said, don't send it yet. And then I said, lift your cell phones. And everyone did that. It was such a sight. And then we prayed in Jesus' name. That every one of these texts, all of these seas of evangel of the gospel, would be led by the Spirit of God when they went out from this church. And then we counted down together three, two, one, and then everyone pressed send all together. And, and the network was broken all over Uppsala. And then all the texts flew away, and I thought. This was things that Paul and Peter couldn't do, actually. We can be in a church and send 
some thousands of seeds of the gospel to people who aren't even there. But the special thing was that after that meeting was over, there was a long row of youth in line to tell things about me. Everyone held my, their cell phones in their hand and showed me, it to me like this. The replies had come in. And one after one had gotten a text back from their friends where it said like, how could you know that I needed to hear this? How could you know? How could you know that just what you wrote was what I needed to hear? The most dramatic text that came back was from a girl who was in Cholefteo uh, and got a text like this. She had been sitting in her room all by herself and for the first time she had prayed a prayer where he said, God, if you exist, so give me a sign on your existence. Bling! She looked at the text and it said, God heard your prayer. And you know, I don't think that the girl that sent that text felt waves of fire go up and down. I don't think that that girl had goosebumps over her whole body and saw angels when she sent that text. She just acted in belief that God's Spirit can and will lead you much, much more than what you think. A lot of times I think we stop evangelization of Sweden because we're too scared to be used by the Spirit. And one of the most wonderful fruits of the Europe Conference 2022 can be that out from this conference go a whole generation, young and old, that are expecting that every day God's Spirit will lead me. Every day God's, I will plant seeds in people's life. Every day He can lead my prayers. Every day He can lead my words and my contacts. And it's, that's how we can affect this country for Jesus. The last thing I want to say before we will go in front of the Lord's face and let Him start to speak to us tonight I have said relax and we've said respond. The last point that is so important when God wants to lead you and speak to you is reach out. Because 95 times of 100 when God speaks to you, you will not be the destination of the word. It won't be about you. It will be about someone else that God wants to touch through you. He loves you and all of that, but if I'm a bit brutal to you now, you and me, despite all the problems we have, we have it good. Because we are going to heaven. And every single day, even the most worthless day in your life, will get you one step closer to heaven. And the devil can't do anything about that. But there are people around us every day that are going to another place. And that's why when God speaks, we need to have that perspective that this isn't just for me. It's not for my goosebumps. It's not that the details in my life should be fixed, but someone should hear that there is life, that there is forgiveness, that there is a new chapter, that there is a future and a hope. And I love uh, the parable in Luke 15 about a woman who had ten silver coins but lost one. And it says uh, in Luke 15, verse 8, or suppose a woman has ten silver coins and loses one, doesn't she light a lamp? Sweep the house and search carefully until she finds it. It is obvious that that uh, lost coin is a lost soul, a person who hasn't uh, seen Jesus yet, and the light that goes out from him. It's also 
obvious that the woman represents God, but you are in this parable too. You are the lamp that He lights. He comes with His fire over your life, not just because you should brag about how burning you are, but because you should make this world a bit warmer and a bit lighter. Amen. We're so strange sometimes. We call to God for all kinds of things. God, send your fire, your fire. Sometimes I think God looks at us and says, what are you going to use it for? If you get it, what, what are you going to do with it? I don't know. I just want to be burning. God doesn't give us things just because our own pleasure he gives us tools to do this to to make this world a bit more beautiful and a bit more like the kingdom of God but he wants to light you who wants to give you his fire but not firstly because of your own sake but because of your world's sake to make it more beautiful warmer and lighter and here and now we are just going to take a while and let His spirits come over us, prepare our hearts to go out from this conference and be more led by the Holy Spirit, not for our own sake, but because the world needs it. Should we just stand up in the presence of God right now? Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. And what I've said tonight, I have wanted to have a bit of a, an aim on you who are in the beginning of your decision to walk with Jesus. Maybe you believed in Allah for a few years ago, or maybe you're grown up in a Christian family and recently uh, made your own decision. Maybe you're preparing to go Bible school in fall. Please go to the Bible school in the fall. If you don't know what you're going to do in the fall, go to the Bible school. If you know what you're going to do this fall, go to the Bible school instead. You will never ever regret that decision, I promise you. But I carry in my heart a lovely picture about what can happen if the Holy Spirit can touch a generation how much can be changed that is impossible today but if we can open our hearts and invite him whether you've walked with him for a long time or a short time he wants to step into your life and give a new faith to you that he will lead you and he will speak to you in the months and years that are before you so let's just open our hearts and lift our hands to him and just stand in his presence and say that we long for Him. Holy Spirit, we thank you for your precious presence in this church. We thank you, God, that you touch our hearts, open our hearts, and let us hear your voice, hear your voice through your word, through the godly traditions that we establish in our life by Christian common sense but also your personal word to us heavenly thoughts that you put in our thoughts that we can trust that they can release your gospel to the women at the well who needs to hear it so well thank you that you sent your fire and equip us to make this world a bit brighter and warmer so that another lost coin can be found. We thank you that you touch your people tonight and calibrate a spiritual sensitivity in our hearts. There are two things we are going to do tonight in uh, the face of the Lord, in the presence of the Lord. Can I just ask you to stand and, and close your eyes in a moment? There is nothing magical about closing your eyes, but it helps you to focus on Jesus. And now when you stand in the presence of the Lord, can I just ask you to do what I uh, mentioned for a while ago? If you just start thinking about the people who are uh, living close to you, that is a part of your world, 
It could be neighbors, friends, relatives, could be colleagues or classmates. Let's just let your inner eyes see these people that you know and that are a part of your reality. And of all these people that live close to you and that you have some kind of relationship to with, I want you to stay and focus on one person. We speak a lot about changing the world, but the world changes uh, starts with one person. I just want to give you a few seconds to let your thoughts stay uh, with one person. Maybe it's someone who's going through a hard time right now that really needs Jesus. Someone who doesn't know him. Some of them maybe knew him someday, but don't anymore. And when you think about that one person and you have him or her so clearly in front of your eyes that you could say his or her name if someone asked you, I want you to raise your hand and your raised hand becomes a silent sign that you know. I know who I'm thinking about. And let's do this very concretely. Hundreds of hands are going up in this church. I want to give it a moment until everyone has a lifted hand in here. And every hand represents one person that Jesus loves and that Jesus died for. And if in just a few seconds we are going to pray a prayer that the Holy Spirit that led you to think about just this person, this maybe you think, oh, it's me. But yes, you are in God's presence. You are a child of God. This is how He speaks to you. The Spirit who led you to think about that person will also give you the words that unlocks that person's heart. That He will also give you the warmth and the light that will show Jesus to that person. And when we pray in just a few seconds for this person, I want you to connect to your prayer exactly the same attitude that Isaiah had. Here I am, send me. And if we do this tonight and are serious, hundreds of people's lives outside of this church will hear about Jesus as a result of what you decided to do in this Saturday night at the Europe conference. I think that everyone I see has raised their hand. Can you raise the other hand now too? And then let us just pray the Lord's blessing over this person that God's Spirit led us to think about. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you, Lord. We thank you that you speak, Lord. You are a God who speaks. And we are people who want to listen. We want to live with open hearts. We want to respond. And Lord, now we stand here relaxed before you. And we trust that you so simply and so naturally led us to think about this person. It wasn't coincidence. It wasn't just an, a situation. We heard something from heaven in this moment. And we heard it not just to pray a prayer, but to act to take a step, to lift our city, to, to reach out, to, to call someone, to, uh, to meet someone, to send a text. And we stand here and we say, Holy Spirit, here I am, send me, give me the words I need, give me the warmth I need, give me the light I need. Let me be the lamp in your hand that can light up the darkness so that you can find another lost coin. Lord, we thank you that you speak and you who speaks also equips us. You give us what we need, boldness, joy. We give you, thank you, Lord, you have the key to every heart and we pray for that key, Lord. We pray that we, as a result of the Saturday night, at the Europe Conference 2022, there is a boldness in your people, and hundreds and hundreds of people come, are going to hear the gospel, are going to experience your love, are going to experience salvation. We thank you for that, Lord. And we, we are taking this decision in our heart right now. And the coming week or the week after, we want 
to believe that when we have taken that initiative that you asked me to take, we will see that we were so much more led by the Spirit of God this night and what we could ever imagine. We thank you for that in Jesus' name. And everyone said, if you think that God is prepared to do great things for the person he just prayed for, just cheer for him now. Thank you, Jesus. This is Christianity, not just things that happens in a church, but the gospel that is going out to the whole country, out in every country that is represented in here. There is just one more thing we should do here before we praise God and finish this meeting. It just burns inside me. It's been so in my whole life, Maria, but it's still burning. I just see all of you young people spread out here, and I'm starting to become an old man now. I like that you laughed. Someday you will not laugh when I said this. I don't know when Jesus comes back. No one knows. But I know that you as a youth are living closer to his uh, coming than you, I am. And I know that his kingdom works, that that kingdom will go from glory to glory to glory. That means that he's put you in the world that to experience more glory than I have. And that means that God is so interested to... Uh, fill you with this Holy Spirit. So if you're 25 years or below, can you come up here and I will want to pray for you. And I want to pray that the Holy Spirit is going to touch you, that the Holy Spirit is going to use you, that the Holy Spirit is going to fill you, that the Holy Spirit is going to send you as an arrow on his bow, and that the Holy Spirit should be, will be mobilized as part of a young generation that will prepare for Jesus coming back. We're not going to pray personally for everyone, but you can go in this direction so many pe as many can people as can fit. But I'm just going to pray a prayer and everyone who's in the room can just reach out their hands and just pray the Lord's blessing over you. Thank you, Jesus. When I see you who come up here, I see myself. I was 16 when the Spirit of God came into me. And I, I never knew what an adventure would start. I, I never knew how God would use a little kid from Lexand. And everything I would see of people getting saved, miracles and revival. And I know that even if I've seen uh, some things, God has even bigger things for you and your generation. And I see a hunger in your eyes. And if I can just say th one more thing before I pray, it's, I say go with Jesus as long as he leads you. You will never regret that you gave everything to Jesus. You will never regret that you gave everything to Jesus. And all of you out there who are not in the front, don't think, oh, is it just the youth who is important now? It's kind of, it's just as stupid to think that you think when you get a child, you become unimportant as a parent. Is it just the kids? I can tell you that when you become a parent, you're more important than ever. And as spiritual uh, dads and moms, can you just reach out your hands to a young generation of young men and women that God loves and that God wants to put their hand over. And if you're in the front, lift your hands to him, to your Savior, to Jesus Christ that calls you by name. And there is an enemy that wants to take your life, but there is a Jesus who loves you so much more Father, we pray in Jesus' name for every, each and every one of these young people. We thank you for your spirit over the next generation. We thank you that you will equip a whole generation, that you put your spirit over them. We thank you for missionaries. We thank you for entrepreneurs. We thank you for pastors. We thank you for uh, carers. We thank you for journalists, artists. We thank you for doctors. We thank you for people who you are shooting out in Sweden and in Europe, burning for Jesus. 
and filled with the Holy Spirit. Just keep calling out to Him, keep calling out to Him. We thank you, Lord. We praise you, Lord, that you're here and now just wake up these people's faith. They will hear your voice. They will do your will. They will go further than we went. They will see bigger things. They will see bigger glory. They will build bigger churches, reach more people with the gospel. We praise you for that, Father. Lord, we thank you that you put your spirit heavy and powerful over the young generation who is standing up here. We thank you for every open heart. We thank you for the work that you do, the work I that you would seal every decision that is formed in front of you now. If you're up here, can you just say after me, we can do that, all of us. Dear Jesus, here tonight I decide to open my heart, be led by the Holy Spirit, not serve other gods, but give my life the rest of my days to follow, love and serve the Lord, King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. My Lord, Jesus Christ, in the power of the Holy Spirit, Jesus, here I am. Send me in Jesus' name. Amen. And let's cheer to the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Let's just finish to cheer to the Lord and praise Him with all your hearts.
sound of Jesus' name. Lights may hold, hearts away at the sound of Jesus' name. Chains will fall, fruits will shake at the sound. Lord, we honor you, Lord, for a place of freedom and a place of grace. Wonderful, so lovely. Thank you, thank you, Pastor Joachim. And the, you started this and you let me finish it. So wonderful. We finished this night here. We keep. We are back at 10 p.m. And then Pastor Tim preaches to us. So you're welcome back then. If you're going home tonight, and uh, if you're going home to, tomorrow morning, oh, I need to breathe. Thank you that you came to the Europe Conference 2022. Welcome back to Europe Conference 2023. If you're staying, and we have a meeting at 10 a.m. tomorrow morning, and I preach a special service because we also have uh, we would send out missionaries from here. So welcome back and God bless you. Thank you for this evening. If you want to l listen to Pastor Tim, come back at 10 p.m. What a night. What do you say, Amanda? I am almost have nothing to say. It's been an amazing night. God just took us by storm. He's really been here. There's so much joy and freedom in this place. I feel shaken. <laughs> I was uh, crowd here, all crowded in here. We have had an amazing night, really. I hope uh, you've felt that through the screen. I hope that God has spoken to you. And we want to hear the voice of God. We want to hear God speak to us. And He can speak to you. We will soon, in this crowd, get a guest but in all of this we just want to say that wow God has said a lot of things to me and I will actually take a few days uh, after the conference tomorrow we have our last meeting but then Sunday Monday Tuesday I think I will go with some uh, headphones and listen to messages again and I want to encourage you to do that as well if you've missed a few uh, messages during the conference, make sure to watch them. 
There's so many amazing things during this week, and now our guest is coming here. It is our pastor, Janne Blum, who uh, will be with us in the studio today. He also preaches tomorrow, so we wanted to check with him what he has prepared for tomorrow. Can you reveal something? My preaching uh, tomorrow is packed and ready. What are you taking from the Europe Conference 2022? I will go through some of the things, uh, sum up the conference and what I ex feel like the Lord has spoken to us. Mother Me spoke earlier. Uh, Joachim mentioned all of these puzzle pieces that has been laying down during the conference, key building that we personally took to us. But was it something that has landed a bit extra in your heart? It can be something that God has said or something like that. For me, it's the word that we received before that he will come as a rain and it that really happened it's been like that during the whole conference such a presence of the holy spirit and at the beginning with ben fitzgerald too and the way that he flows in and lets the holy spirit flow no hype no stress just serving people i'm so happy for that because it is so much more than I could ever imagine. But that's something that has really been put in my heart. I have to confess that I've been so happy. Uh, it was yesterday night when Tim spoke to my life. It was so powerful. I was just... It was so wonderful that he turned to you and said, Janne, there are new things, there is something for you to bring up. And I was just, uh, real, yeah. I believe that for me and for our church and for our movement, it, there's a lot of commotion here. I think this conference is a milestone. Uh, I have stepped up as a head pastor and uh, there have been a lot of work and we've tried to find a way forward but i feel like it's finished and the lord speaks and we can step out of the boat and go in faith you mentioned that this is the conference you have just become the head pastor it's the first conference that you've been host for what are your thoughts about that i'm so happy it's been uh, a lot I've ran uh, between different conversations. I've been to all of the meetings. So it's been very busy, but I'm so happy and grateful for what the Lord has done and all the people who has come. I've shared that a couple of times, that uh, a pastor's nightmare is that you come to the room and then it's empty. But it's like a reconnection of people's hearts and relationships. Two years of digital conference uh, to get to come here and gather. And when you started the first meeting in the Tuesday evening, it was like an explosion. So I'm so happy and grateful. Do you think it's different, this conference, uh, p compared to earlier years since it's been two pandemic years? Yeah, you feel that uh, from the beginning there is an ex ex hunger and the heart in the worship. And I think the worshippers have done an amazing job, a new height in the worship. But that is because there is such a longing and such a hunger from the people. They are lifting the roof. I have to say that it's been very special, these uh, words that have come and the preached messages and the puzzle pieces have been so together. Some messages have always been like, have they spoken to each other before? We had uh, an experience like that before the conference. I was taking up the offering and, and, and gives the Bible word that your Pre message was about you almost took my whole message but it was so comical that at first I take your message completely unaware about what you're going to preach and then Mats Ola comes up and Tim almost has the uh, similar message it's so amazing God has just spoken I think that when we prayed for the conference and carried it in our hearts it's like a call to the Lord the Lord um, 
sews it together like only he can do we can pray we can wish we can dream but it is the lord that uh, puts the puzzle pieces so i'm just blown away i uh, have to say we are packing the conference down now after tomorrow we have one meeting uh, left of course but after that we will pack and then we will take uh, some vacation but I don't really know if I want a vacation. I just want to get to work. I also feel that, and I'm already in the next conference, 2023. I'm just feeling like, let's go, equipped and ready, 2023, more of all this. So if you've been with us this conference, we are so happy for you have been with us online. But please, dear friends, plan to come to the Euro Conference 2023. You can see that we're hyped, but we want to see that so many as possible can come. Come and plan the Europe Conference 2023 in your calendars already. It will be amazing. Are you excited for tomorrow, Janne? There is a bit more left in my mind, but I'm looking forward to tomorrow's service. We're also going to separate the pastors and we're sending Tia Hamre to India. So there is some space for preaching besides that, but I'm really excited. So come be with us tomorrow. It's the final meeting tomorrow morning. So be here and be ready. We really believe that God has a final word for this conference and uh, he will s wants to uh, put his uh, end to it. So be here wherever you are, be with us. Amanda, you're wise. Do you have a final word? I just want to encourage you who sits here and listen to come tomorrow. There is more, uh, just as Pastor Janne said, there is more for you. And the fact is that we actually have another meeting tonight, so if you have the opportunity, we encourage you to come here. Tim Ross will preach at 10, so if you're a youth or young adult or anywhere in between, come here. If you have children in their, that, that age group, send them here. We think God has more for our youth and our young adults. And if you can't come tonight, come tomorrow and listen to Pastor Janne. It's like having a new meeting here or log in at 10 tomorrow. Thank you, Pastor, that you're here with us. We are looking forward to the service tomorrow. We're so grateful for this conference and that you have been with us. Simon? With all that said, uh, I think we just want to say good night. If it's not good night to you, come and be with us tonight, uh, this uh, night meeting and be with us tomorrow. Otherwise, bless you and thank you that you've been with us tonight.